Hi there, I wanna welcome you to Web422 and introduce myself, I am David Humphrey. Uh, I'm gonna be teaching you Web422 this semester. So you can find me on Twitter or anywhere on the internet. I'm at HumphD or on GitHub. And uh, this is a fantastic course. I, I love this course. Web422 is um, the, the end of a long journey for you or, or perhaps the beginning if you're gonna be continuing on and doing more web work, but uh, you've, you've, you've been focused on learning so many different aspects of the web. And this one, we get to take you into building modern uh, front-end web apps and, uh, and tools. So I've been programming the web since the web began and uh, working on the web and browsers for the last 20 years. Um, I've with a major focus on Mozilla and Firefox where uh, with Mozilla, I've been working with them for a long time, more than 15 years. So the JavaScript ecosystem, JavaScript is, uh, is what I love. And so I'm really excited to be able to teach it to you to go, uh, to go deeper. So I wanna do a quick intro to the course and I'm gonna break this week's material up into a number of videos and I'll, I'll talk about that. So right now, let me just talk to you about the structure of the course and say something about the goals of, of what we're gonna do. Okay, so the website is web422.ca and you've been doing web222.ca, web322.ca and it's a similar idea. So um, all of the materials that we're gonna be working on are already here, the course notes, the schedule, etc. And so you can look now at the, uh, the weekly schedule in order to get a sense of um, what it is that we're gonna be doing. So for example, this week, we're gonna be talking about uh, your, de your dev environment, making sure you have it set up properly. And we're gonna be talking about um, REST APIs and backend web services and how we're gonna get ready to use those in the front end, how to connect those up in the browser. I'll have an assignment for you this week. So things like assignments and announcements and so on, I'll do through Blackboard and the Blackboard course is available. However, I'm not gonna use Blackboard extensively. So I'm gonna to prefer to use GitHub, YouTube. Uh, I'm gonna use the web. I'm gonna use the tools of the web in a course that's about the web. So as much as I can, I will try and um, either use the course notes website, GitHub, et cetera, to share things with you. But I will use, I'll have tests and so on that will be available through um, through Blackboard. So it's available. So all, as I say, all the material is here. So each week, the readings, for example, for week one are up on the course, course notes section. If you take a look inside notes, for this week, uh, they're extensive and you'll see that they're broken up. So often what we'll have is we'll have a series of topics that we're gonna be looking at. As I say, we're gonna talk about dev tools, web services, etc. And so it's gonna be important for you to go through these materials. I'm gonna expect you to read through these materials on your own. So what I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna put up a bunch of slides and go through them and narrate and tell you this is where you put your semicolon and this is what this function does. I, I'm not gonna do that. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the time that we have in the lectures to really focus on building code examples with you. I wanna show you how to do the things that the notes are talking about. So I'm counting on you to read through these notes, make sure that you're up to date when you come uh, to watch the different videos and work on the materials for the week, that you've read through these things and, un uh, and understood them. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna put my lectures on the web as videos and I'm gonna do them asynchronously. So I want to talk a bit about why. So the web is fundamentally an asynchronous technology and we're gonna be having to deal with all kinds of aspects of the way that IO on the web works uh, and the fact that you have to do things and then wait for them. And so we're gonna introduce ideas like you've been dealing with callbacks and promises and async await and all of that. So deeply embedded into the technology of the web is this idea of asynchronous communication where you do things and then you, know, you come back to them and you, and you uh, pick up where you left off. Right now we're in obviously in a unique situation and every one of your courses is gonna handle this slightly differently. I'll tell you my philosophy. So as I've talked to students throughout the, the, the time where we've been doing this online, 
people have said to me that what they really need is they need uh, they need help to be able to overcome specific uh, situations that they're dealing with at home. Some people have um, family members who they're with health concerns that they're dealing with. Some people have small children at home. Some people are working. Um, all of us have any number of complications with life being more difficult um, where we have to do everything online. So what I wanna try and do is I wanna support you in being able to learn this material and I'm not going to have you adhere to a strict, strict schedule. So on paper, we have class times at very specific times, Mondays and Wednesdays we meet. However, I'm gonna post my videos for the whole week, all the materials for the week at the beginning of the week and I'll send them out to you, I'll send you links and you can work through them during the week. So if you wanna watch the lectures during lecture time, like during the regular scheduled lecture time, you can do that. If you wanna do them at night, if you wanna do 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there, that's fine too. So there isn't a right way to do this. It's uh, something that I wanna support you in. Now, another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rely heavily on Teams. So we're gonna do all of our interaction and discussions and questions and all of the things that you need help with. Uh, I wanna do those through Teams. And instead of having a particular office hour time, I'm going to just tell you that I'm basically always available. So you can reach out to me on Teams or via email, but Teams is really good. And I can chat with you and help you know get you unstuck or I can help you understand a concept. So feel free to reach out to me. I have uh, sent you the team link. So you can jump into the team. If you're having trouble getting onto the team, just email me and I'll uh, help you get, get that figured out. So as much as I can, I wanna make this uh, be an experience where you can immerse yourself in these technologies and these techniques. You can put lots of time into figuring out how to do it. And I wanna try and remove as much as I can the stress of also trying to balance schedules and the internet goes down and you know just so many problems that we have. So I'll do the same thing for the, uh, for the graded work. So for the graded work for the course, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do tests and assignments. So essentially what we're gonna have once we get going is you're, you're basically gonna have a test or an assignment every week, like the, they will alternate and you'll see that in the course schedule. So your first assignment coming up is gonna be given out this week. The first one's a bit smaller and then they get a little bit bigger. So each assignment is generally about two weeks in, in duration. We'll give you two weeks to work on those. And so every two weeks you have an assignment due, every two weeks you have a test. And so we'll go back and forth between those. So there are six assignments worth 50% of your grade, six tests worth 50% of your grade. Uh, in terms of the tests, what we'll do is we'll drop the lowest one. So if you have to miss a test uh, because of health reasons or some other problem, something that's going on, that's fine. You can do that. I don't reschedule tests. Instead, what I will do is I will just drop your lowest one. So you have, you know, we all have a bad day, something goes wrong. So that's built into what we're gonna do here. The assignments, you need to do all of the assignments uh, in order to pass the to pass the course. So the assignments are where you really do the learning. The way, if you wanna be a, a good web developer, if you wanna learn to be a programmer, you have to program. You have to write lots and lots and lots of code. The more you develop, the more you write code, the more you make mistakes and correct them, the better you're gonna do um, as a developer. You have to build up this muscle of being able to debug and being able to think through problems, decompose problems down into functions, components, classes, etc. So the assignments are really critical and they're gonna give you a chance to play with all of the technologies that we're gonna be learning. So I'm gonna ask you a couple of uh, favors. One is I don't want you to post your assignments publicly, the code at least, on GitHub. So you can put things on GitHub. I would encourage you to do it. I use GitHub for everything. But I don't want you to share your assignments with other students um, because what happens is people hand in other people's work. I've had lots of students who think they're helping a friend. They show them their assignment and you know their friend is stuck and then their friend takes that assignment and just hands the whole thing in. And then that looks bad for both of you. That's like a, a plagiarism offense for, for both people. So I'm not anticipating having a lot of problems here. GitHub lets you uh, do private repos now, as I'm sure you're aware. You can host everything you want there. You can do all of your work, but I want you to do all this work on your own. I want you, this is gonna sound odd, but I want you to struggle through this work on your own. I want you to 
make sure that you come out of this understanding how to build with these technologies. It's not easy. We're gonna cover a lot of ground and there's a lot that you have to learn. However, if you go through the process and you learn how to do this stuff, you're gonna become uh, really comfortable with it. So another thing I'll talk about in addition to the notes, so we have the Web422 website. Uh, we also have a GitHub repo. The Web422 GitHub repo has code examples. So each week there'll be a bunch of code examples and I have uh, other examples that I'll do specific for our section that I'll also throw up on GitHub. I have one for you today. So all of the code is gonna be available so you can go and you can grab this repo and pull down the examples and get the code that, um, that we're gonna be talking about. Okay, so that's the, that's the course, um, the high level outline of it. But what is the course? What are we actually gonna be doing? So at the, at the beginning of the Web422 page, there's a nice graphic that goes through the different courses, Web222, Web322, Web422. So I, I wanted to just take a few minutes to talk about the progression that you are working your way through and what this course is gonna to do to build on the things that you've already done. So everything that you've done up to this point is critical for what we're about to do. I'm gonna make use of a lot of it. I'm gonna assume that you know how to do things from the past. I'm gonna bring back things that you learned in Web222 or things that you used in 322. You're gonna need all of it in order to do what we're about to do. Okay, so Web222, some of you I had for 222 and others had different professors, but the, the idea is, is that we wanted to introduce you to the fundamentals of the web. What is a URL? What is JavaScript? Starting to build things with the DOM, working with HTML, writing your own static HTML writing styles, using CSS, working with classes, uh, working with, uh, you know, dynamic aspects of the, of, of the browser, working with user input via forms. In 322, you took that further. You pushed that JavaScript back onto the server side. So you started to be, you know, become what you hear referred to as a full stack web developer, someone who can work in the browser all the way back into the server side, working with Node.js, working with Express, doing server side programming, working with templating engines, uh, connecting to databases, doing CRUD operations, pulling data in, you know, out, in and out of a database, and then rendering that into static HTML that gets sent down to the browser to be rendered. So that style of programming, server side rendering of web of web content is really popular. In fact, it's having a resurgence. There was a time when all web programming was done that way. So in the early days of the web, CGI style programming, there was a lot of that. Then there was a move to go from the server to the client. And so more and more stuff happened on the client side. Browsers became more powerful. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. And so you could do more at the client. And so why don't we push more of the processing out to the, out to the browser? So 422 takes you further into the browser. And what it tries to do is introduce you to a way of programming that's especially popular building web apps really is uh, the way we're gonna talk about this. Um, and we're gonna show you how you can use JavaScript and the DOM and communicate with backend services, web services, to be able to build web apps that are dynamic and respond to changes in data, changes, uh, they interact with the user and allow you to build these highly dynamic apps. Now you already use lots of these. I, I brought a few examples that I wanted to show you today, things that I know you'll know about. We, we're gonna work through basically um, a survey of a whole bunch of different front-end technologies. So we're gonna talk about legacy JavaScript approaches. And so we'll talk about things like Lodash and jQuery because I want you to know how these work. We're gonna move forward into using like the most popular uh, Facebook's UI component framework React. And so like, you know, if you use any big sites, if you've ever used Netflix, you've used React. So this is an example of a site that's built with React, if you've used Instagram, if you use Facebook, you're using React. So these are, uh, as you know from using them, they are 
highly interactive, they're dynamic, the data is always changing, they're rich with media, and um, they're great. Like the style of programming, we want to introduce you to how to do that. We're going to move on deeper and we're going to talk about a very popular web app platform uh, programming system from Google called Angular. And so lots of sites and apps use this, like UPS uses it to build their, their web app, or even Microsoft uses it to build Office 365. So when you're using all of these tools, Outlook, um, Word, all of the online tools that we have through Office 365 at Seneca, you're, you know, you're, you're in this incredibly rich, I mean, it's a website, but it's different than a website. It, it feels more like an application that's you know, living inside the browser. And that's what Angular is going to let us do too. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about moving from doing things on the server side to doing more and more and more on the client side in the browser, taking advantage of how powerful uh, browsers have become today. I was, just, you know, I was reflecting a little bit on how powerful browsers are today, and maybe some of you have seen this example before. But what I'm, you know, here in one of my tabs. I'm running Windows 2000. So like this is, um, <laughs> I'm running an operating system inside of my browser tab. And the web of today is so powerful. It, it's basically an operating system and you can run all kinds of powerful things. Things that, you know, 20 years ago, you used to need a full computer to run. Now they're just something you run in a piece of a website. I brought another good example in today that uses a really modern piece of the web, something that's just emerging right now, and that's WebAssembly. Browsers are becoming more and more and more powerful and able to run uh, native code. So being able to write code in C++ or C or in Rust or some of these languages and then compile that and connect that into rich interactive front ends. So here's a really powerful app by Google. This is Google Earth. Google Earth used to be this huge thing you had to download and it was this native app. And now, you know, I can work with the same data in my browser and I just, I load it up and there is, there's Google Earth, uh, 3D rendering, really, really rich interactive environment. So when we talk about what you can build with a browser and we talk about client side, uh, client side applications and client side web, we're talking about a, a rich programming environment that lets you work with sensors in a mobile phone, that lets you work with data from web services, lets you communicate in real time. I mean, so many of you are doing your classes right now. You're using Zoom, you're using Teams, you're using video, text, audio, screen sharing, all of that's happening through the browser. So the browser is a tremendously powerful platform and you putting time into learning how to leverage it, how to do more, uh, how to do more powerful, work in the browser and combine that with what you know about the server side, it makes you uh, able to do incredible, incredible things. So we're going to talk a lot in this course about things like tools. I'll talk about libraries. I'll talk about frameworks. I'll talk about platforms. And when I use these terms, I just wanted to, you know, untangle what I'm talking about. So when I talk about a tool, I'm talking about things that are used to generate other pieces of code. For example, we're going to be learning about TypeScript. So tools are task specific and they're not aware of the entire uh, context of your application. Then we move into something like a library, pieces of code that we're going to integrate into what we're building. So a good example of this is something like jQuery or Lodash, where you're building an application and you pull pieces of code to connect into what you're building. These are libraries. I'm going to talk about frameworks as this idea of having scaffolding. I want to build an application. I want to build something. And so instead of beginning with nothing and adding a few pieces, I want to begin with a structure. I want to begin with a frame and I want to put things onto this frame. So this idea of working with frameworks when we're talking about things like working with React, they have, uh, they have a view of the world and you have to start adhering to that view of the world in the way that you write your code. So you're gonna have to learn how to, how to think about writing code in the style of the framework. So that's gonna be things like working with components as an example, or starting to write things, especially in the uh, React world, how to do things using functional programming approaches, which we're gonna talk a lot about. 
I'm also going to talk about this idea of a platform and a platform is something on which you build other things. It's highly opinionated. It hides the details of what's below it. So when we're talking about building on a platform like Angular, you are, you know, you're going to have to take as a starting point everything that the Angular platform gives you. So we're going to see that when you're doing web development, front end web development, you can use a little bit of things or you can use a lot. And depending on what you're building and how you want to do your work, it's going to be good to know both of them. We will, um, as I say, we'll survey across these technologies. So in this course, you're going to get a chance to play with all of them, write code for all of them. And it's good because the web is designed to be backward compatible. If you've ever worked with me before on the web, you've probably heard me say that when you learn the web, you have to learn what, what we used to do. You have to learn the oldest ways of doing things on the web. And you also have to learn the most up-to-date ways of doing things on the web. And everything in between is still happening. So it might seem odd for you to spend time learning something like jQuery. Like people don't tend to write code in jQuery anymore. However, there are millions and millions and millions of sites out there that still use it. So when you go and work for a company and they have a huge application that they've been working with for the last 15 years, probably a lot of it, like there's pieces of it in there that you need to understand. You need to understand the older ways that we used to work with the web. And then you also need to know how to connect that into the modern ways of doing things. So what the web does is the web maintains backwards compatibility. Whatever used to work on the web continues to work on the web, which is why the web is so is so popular because companies can't uh, deprecate everything one year. One year, you know, somebody a company like Apple can't come along and say we're no longer going to support this. This happens all the time in other platforms, but on the web, the web has to continue to work. So really, you know, web pages from 20 years ago still work. So the web standards evolve to take ideas from these libraries and frameworks and they roll them back into the web platform as a whole. So lots of things that used to be, uh, you used to need jQuery or Lodash for as an example, which we'll learn about, they've now found their way into the web. And so you don't need those things anymore because they've become part of the web. So the web is constantly evolving and it's absorbing the best ideas of a lot of these frameworks. Everybody uses everything, all the old, all the new. There's no one right way to do it. And so what I don't want you to do as well, we're going to be focused on client side uh, ways of building web applications and websites, but everything you learned about server side is still relevant. You're going to do all of it. Uh, and that's going to sound weird, but um, there isn't there isn't one approach that's perfect for you. You know, every time I build something with the web, I build it a different way because the needs of what I'm build, building are going to dictate where my performance is critical. Is it in rendering the data? Is it in caching the data? Is it in the size of the data? Like there's all sorts of aspects that have to be figured out based on what you're building. Um, yeah, I think that's probably, that's probably a great place to pause. So here's what I wanna do. I'm gonna do some follow-up videos. I wanna talk about how to get your dev, your dev environment set up for the work that we're gonna do. I want to talk about how we work with REST APIs and talk about HTTP, JSON, et cetera. I wanna look at some code examples for how to use Express in order to build web APIs, different than what you've been doing with um, rendering static HTML out to a browser. And then what I wanna do is I wanna write a full example app, a little app that takes data from an API and renders it dynamically in the browser. I'm gonna do it all with pure DOM uh, functions or vanilla JavaScript as they call it, and show you, start to um, pave the way for what we're gonna do in terms of working with uh, all of the frameworks like React and Angular, what they're gonna do for us once we uh, go a little bit further. Okay, so I'll pause this there. Really excited to, I guess I'm meeting you, uh, really excited to get started working on this with you. And um, I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this. Building code for the browser is exciting. It's always evolving. It's never the same. And um, the fundamentals that you've learned are going to apply to all of the different technologies that you're learning. So if you can truly understand what we're doing as opposed to memorizing a bunch of syntax, 
you're going to be able to pick up new technologies as they go. You're not going to have uh, trouble with this. So that's our goal is to really give you a, an understanding of what's happening here. Okay, I'll see you in the follow-up videos.